So this is off of 09 530 I. 01. 01 539. Yeah, I had to be corrected there. So this is the fluid control clutch. And prior to replacing it, you see there's also a new electric clutch. When I checked this thing out yesterday, it was skyrocketing right over 450 PSI and it would cut off the clutch, uh, cut off the compressor, and it was like pretty fast. And you can see the airflow coming out of here, but there was airflow yesterday, but it wasn't enough. And it's something over experience and time, you just know that. And it's not locked up one-to-one. -one. It's still not hot enough to actually do the bimetallic screen and lock it up to one-to-one. -one. So this thing will roar even more when it gets hotter. It'll catch a certain point, it'll speed up, and then by pulling more air through it, it'll cool down the bimetallic, it will release and allow it to slip more, and then it'll slow back down. It'll keep repeating that step. But that is in conjunction with the electric that I have disconnected right now. It was smashed, it was just in an accident. So I disconnected it because I wanted to see what this brand new thermal clutch that you can see nice and shiny right where my shadow's getting that shiny ring right there. So that's been replaced. And where are we at here? We're at 253.37 right there. Um, let me get back out here, that's too close. So now I'm gonna connect the fan and let's see here. There we go, the fan is going. Now the fan will take over. And we'll see that go down. There it goes. The electric fan is going taking over. Now what will happen is that the electric fan can move so much air, as long as it's not 100 degrees outside, that the more air you move will hit the face of the thermal fan clutch and it'll cool down that bimetallic and it'll actually start releasing it and your thermal fan clutch, your mechanical fan clutch driven by the water pump will start slowing down because this will move so much air over it, it cooled down your little thermal uh, bimetallic piece right here that controls how fast that goes. So when you wanna condemn one of these and you have this working too at the same time, some cars like some BMWs will have a pressure switch that won't allow a fan to even come on until it hits 270 degrees of PSI. So what you wanna do is you'll wanna disconnect it if it's easy to get to and just wait for your temperature, your coolant to get up, heat this up, and you'll notice that it never locks up one-to-one, -one, it never spins really good, and it allows your high side pressure to go over 450. And you'll go, but my engine is not overheating. The thing is, radiators are so well overbuilt because they didn't want warranties and they don't want you know engines going so the radiator doesn't need much air to go over it to do enough cooling to not vent your temperature on your coolant to go up but condensers are built the hair that what do they call it? the straw that will break the camel's back they're so fine at where they will and will not and they go that thermal runaway and once they reach that point where they can't return they'll go into thermal runaway and you'll see it go right up to 450 psi so this is doing really good now oh and i just ate my yeah i shut it off i'm gonna leave this on video and and i just ate my my thermal probe off of my uh thing there while I'm paying attention to uh, our good old thingamajigger here. Oh well, let me get that out of there. I'll fish that out of there. But so far, there we go. So far for this video on my uh, thermal, it's a good thing I have a lot of these. I have no shortage of these thermal fan probes uh, things. And where was I? And I think we're finished for today because this thing doing, was doing really good. And I'll catch you guys later, as you see. Uh, Shit happens.